Hi, welcome to Tasha's Library. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of bookgrocer.com. Now, I found this advert on Facebook, and I know it's probably not the best place to find, you know, products to buy, but I thought this would be really cool. I picked the science nonfiction box, which is pretty cool. I know it's not science fiction and fantasy, but this is probably the genre of nonfiction that I love the most. And it had a few cool books that I actually really wanted and calculated it. And it actually would have cost me more to buy two of the books individually than this entire box. So I thought today we would open it and see what they look like. And I'll give you my opinion as to whether bookriser.com is cool open the box now got my handy scissors and get in there okay let's have a look so it comes with heaps heaps of packaging uh, paper packaging the top of it's really well protected which is awesome because it actually can be quite easy to slice your books open when you're trying to open the box so very grateful for that and what did I get I had a hey, nice pics. Enjoy your books. Cute little bookmark called um, I Love Books. You are here, little book grocer. So that's kind of a nice touch. And let's have a look at the books. This is very exciting because I can't even actually remember all the books that were in there. So the first one is Genesis, the story of how everything began. And this is. A really nice cover, nice gilded cover, hard cover, um, pretty cool. One is by Guido Tonelli, and it is, what is this about? What if the ancient Greeks were right and the universe really did spring into being out of chaos and the void? How could we know and what must its first moments have been like? And so the acclaimed particle physicist Guido Tonelli, a central figure in the discovery of the Higgs boson, reveals the extraordinary story of our genesis from the origins of the universe, the emergence of life on Earth, to the birth of human language and its power to describe the world. That looks cool. And the second book in here is Einstein's Fridge, The Science of Fire, Ice and the Universe by Paul Sen. So this is a paperback and talks about the laws of the thermodynamics govern everything from the behavior of atoms to that of living cells from the engines that power our world to the black hole at the center of our galaxy not only that but thermodynamics explain why we must eat and breathe how the lights come on and ultimately how the universe will end so it looks at the people decoded these powerful laws the engineers, physicists, chemists, biologists, cosmologists, and mathematicians. And book number three, another hard back out there. Ooh, a scientific guide to alien life, antimatter, and human space travel for the cosmically curious by Michael Wall. So, pretty plain cover. Sounds kind of cool. Once again, just normal quality hardback. Listen to the back though. Picture an alien in your head. I don't mean conjure up a skull dwelling parasite that feeds off your bad dreams and insecurities. Though this is indeed an option. Any alien, anywhere, what do you see? And this looks at the key questions of the cosmos and human interactions with it. It, it, it is brain food with flair, nearly impossible to put down. And book number four is Lenin's Laureate. This is Zore's Alfarov's Life in Communist Science by Paul R. Josephson. So this is science biography at its best, a penetrating study of the driving forces of the Russian scientific community. Wow. Okay. So it examines a scientific community in a profoundly unpredictable environment, focusing on a single figure of the talent and savvy to succeed in that environment. So that looks kind of cool. I can't say I've ever heard of him, so I'm actually looking forward to it a lot. 
Ah, so he shared the Nobel Prize for Physics for his discovering of the heterojunction, a semiconductor device, the practical applications of which include light emitting diodes, rapid transistors, and the microchip. And book number five, another hardback. Ah, oh, this is the one I really wanted. It's the element in the room. This is pretty cool. So this is by Helenani and Steve Mould. And it's the sciencey stuff staring you in the face. So why is it impossible to spin your right foot clockwise while you draw six with your right hand? Can you extract DNA from a strawberry daiquiri? Would you make love like a praying mantis? Should you book a holiday on Earth 2.0? So the element in the room will take you on a rib tickling, experiment fueled adventure to explain everyday science that is staring you in the face. If you are psych curious, pie curious, or just the end is nigh curious, then this is the book for you. And this is pretty cool, really nice kind of quality, really nice pages, all sorts of cool little diagrams in it. Um, yeah, looks pretty cool. I'm excited about that one. And the next book is The Greatest St Story Ever Told So Far. So Why Are We Here by Lawrence M. Krauss. So this, once again, nice little hardback, kind of cool. And it tells a dramatic story of the discovery of the hidden world that underlies reality and how we find our place within it. So reality is not what you think or sense. It's weird, wild, and counterintuitive. And its inner workings seem at least as implausible as the idea that something can come from nothing. This looks interesting, like really nice little book. And book number nine is another hardback, The Physics of Everyday Things. And so this is by James Kakalios. And this is one of the other ones I actually kind of wanted because I love the idea of knowing how things work around you. So I thought this would be a really cool book to look at. And it's got a really nice feel to it. See the toasters nice and glossy. The rest of it, it's really cool. And there we go. So this is, most of us are clueless when it comes to the physics that makes our, makes our modern world so convenient. What's the simple science behind motion sensors, touch screens, and toasters? How do we glide through tolls or find our way to new places using GPS? So in the physics of everyday things, James Kakalios takes us on an amazing journey into the subatomic marvels that underlie so much of what we use and take for granted. I'm so looking forward to this one, like, yes. And book number 10 is a paperback, The 10 Women Who Changed Science and the World. I like that cover. That's a cool cover. That looks pretty cool. So really nice. Oh, I love that green. This is my favorite color, by the way. So I'm very, very happy with this one. So this is by Catherine Whitlock and Rodri Evans. And it tells the moving stories of 10 outstanding female physicists, biologists, chemists, astronomers, and doctors who helped to shape our world with their extraordinary breakthroughs and inventions and outlines their remarkable achievements. That looks good. I'm going to enjoy that one. And the next one. I think I'm losing count now. So why does asparagus make your wee smell? Right. So this is by Andy Brunning. And it looks at, and also other 57 other curious food and drink questions. So have you ever wondered why onions make you cry? Why bacon smells so good? And whether mixing drinks really worsens your hangover? So we experience some food and drink with beautiful graphics easy to understand explanations and explores flavors, aromas, poisons, and much more. That is cool. I'm looking forward to that one. And look how pretty it is. Look how pretty it is. This should be a quick little read. Nice, I like that one. And book number 12 is the New York Times books, book of physics and astronomy. So nice hardback, 
really pretty. It's quite a chunk to this one. It's got um, deckled edges, so if you're not a fan of that, you may not enjoy that book very much. And so this is edited by Cornelia Dean and forward by Neil deGrasse Tyson, and it's got multiple contributors. And so take a journey through the archives of the New York Times, exploring landmarks and the newspaper's coverage of physics and astronomy, realms that have dominated science and the popular imagination like a few others in modern times. So we include, ooh, stories written from the years 1888 to 2012. So 129 articles covering everything, including Discovers Neutron Embryonic Matter by Dr. James Chadwick. A visit to Hiroshima proves its world's most damaged city by William H. Lawrence. Rival Cosmologies by Walter Sullivan. So this looks so good. This will be super fascinating. And yes, yeah, so it's basically just got the articles reproduced. So really nice book. I think this will be an interesting one. And one to just sort of dip into, which is nice. And the next one is a paperback, Fire, Ice and Physics. This is The Science of Game of Thrones by Rebecca C. Thompson. Oh my gosh. I'm excited. I'm excited. So Game of Thrones is a fantasy that features a lot of made-up science, fabricated climatology, astronomy, metallurgy, chemistry and biology. Most fans of George R.R. George Martin's Fantastical World accept it all as part of the magic. In this book, Rebecca Thompson turns a scientist's eye on Game of Thrones. A PhD in physics and enthusiastic Game of Thrones fan, Thompson uses the fantasy science of the show as a gateway to some interesting real science. So she starts at the beginning with winter and explaining seasons and the very elliptical orbit of the Earth that might cause winter to come or not come. Oh, I'm excited about this one. This needs to motivate me to finish the books I have on Song of Ice and Fire because I'm only on the third book. And yeah, I don't want spoilers. And the next one is another little paperback. And this one is The Birth of a New Science in the Age of Revolution. <gasps> Lavoisier in the year one. Sorry, it's a bit glossy. <gasps> I'm excited about this one. Madison Smart Bell. Wow. So Lavoisier invented chemistry as we know it. Overthrowing medieval alchemy, creating the terminology still in use by chemists today. Its enthralling narrative reads like a race to the finish line because the very circumstances that enabled Lavoisier to secure his reputation as the father of modern chemistry also caused his glory to be cut short by the French Revolution. This, oh my gosh, this. This has to be read. Okay, so I think I'm up to book 15. And it's The Elements by Jack Shaloner. Once again, quite glossy, this one. Pretty cute little book, just a little compact guide, quite tiny. I've just got the little flap things. And pretty basic paper and looks at each of the elements. Links, the Taj Mahal in our skeleton, the Eiffel Tower in our blood, the salt in our food and the street lamps that guide us home. The answers are calcium, iron and sodium, each one an element. Yes, so this could be good. So the elements features every one of the 118 known elements. Some like carbon, oxygen and aluminium are familiar. Others like gadolinium and tellurium are not. But for each you will find the elements, vital statistics, important compounds, applications, and the fascinating story of their discovery. You know what? I am a sucker, sucker, sucker for books on the elements. I have read so many and I can't stop. And the final book is another hardback called A Big Bang in a Little Room, The Quest to Create New Universes by Zia Morali. So that looks it's really cool. I really like that cover. 
Really nice cover. What does it? Got a nice dust jacket on it. Nice. And what's it about? How did our universe come to be? Even knowing what we know about the Big Bang, is it possible our universe was created by a conscious being? These are some of the greatest questions of human history. Today, however, physicists are asking something new. Is it possible to create a universe ourselves? A Big Bang in a little room takes the reader on a journey through the history of cosmology and unravels particle by particle, theory by theory, and experiment by experiment, the ideas that could enable us to create a new universe. Beyond simply explaining the science, it tells the story of been the people who have been laboring for more than 30 years to make this impossible dream a reality. Never heard of this one? This will be good. I think this will be a good read. So that's my Book Rosa book haul. And is it worth it? Well, it's a lot of books. It's a lot of books. And I mean, some are more interesting than others, but I actually think they all pretty good quality and considering what I paid for them I think this is a pretty good haul they do sell lots of other book boxes so would I buy more from book grocer absolutely as long as it was a box I was interested in um, they, they do have some fantasy sci-fi boxes but I wasn't interested in all the books in them and so I probably wouldn't order them at this stage but something to look out for I'm enjoying this and I should mention I haven't been sponsored for this, so this is just purely I really wanted to buy these books and I thought people might want to hear about how they went and have a look at the quality and hopefully that can help you decide whether that's something you might want as well. So would I buy more from Book Grocer? Absolutely, as long as it was a box I was interested in. Um, they, they do have some fantasy sci-fi boxes, but I wasn't interested in all the books in them, and so I probably wouldn't order them at this stage. But something to look out for. I'm enjoying this. And I should mention I haven't been sponsored for this, so this is just purely I really wanted to buy these books, and I thought people might want to hear about how they went and have a look at the quality and hopefully that can help you decide whether that's something you might want as well. Thank you for watching and may the books be with you.